You can freeze your eggs or sperm to thaw and use at a later date just about anywhere, but there's only three places in the world you can freeze your entire body with any hopes of using it again. Russia, Arizona, and Clinton Township, Michigan. It's been a plot device used in television shows for decades. The crew discovers frozen survivors from the 20th century. They're people. They're people. What the hell is this place? Fiction is closer to real life than you may think. There's seven people in this one and ten in this one. At the Cryonics Institute in Clinton Township, the nitrogen-filled tanks don't have windows, only photos provide a glimpse of the patients cryogenically preserved inside, hoping one day to be revived and restored to good health. Forever isn't necessarily the goal. The goal is longer. For believers in cryonics, death isn't permanent, just an illness waiting for a cure. There's so many things that I, I'd like to do with my life, and, and life is really short. That's one reason financial planner Joe Kowalski of Berkeley wants to give cryonics a shot. I will be frozen, um, at least temporarily is the hope. Interest in cryonics is steadily growing. We have a lot of people in their 20s that are signing up. Some don't want to wake up in the future all alone. You've got 140 people. How many pets do you have? About 120. Really? Yeah. 120 pets. It might sound strange, but to some people, taking your dog to a daycare sounds strange. While reviving a person or a pet after being frozen solid sounds far-fetched, it's happened before. Just last winter in below zero temps, 26-year-old Justin Smith was found blue and lifeless in a Pennsylvania snowbank 12 hours after he'd gone missing. The coroner was on scene, the state police was on scene. They were doing essentially a death investigation. All signs lead, to, lead us to believe that he's been dead for a considerable amount of time. Not giving up, a local doctor used a special machine to warm his blood and then pump it back into his body, thawing Smith and then bringing him back to life. He lost his toes, but surprisingly has no brain damage. It was like I woke up from a dream, but it wasn't a dream, you know? That's the idea of cryonics, with one very big difference. Legally, to freeze someone on purpose, they have to be declared dead first. The moment that happens in a perfect situation, the person can then be placed in a portable ice bath like this one to cool, while a heart and lung machine keep the blood and oxygen flowing. You want to keep the blood flowing while they're cooling down for two reasons. It keeps oxygenated blood going to the cells to keep them alive so that what you're freezing is living, not, not something dead. When the body's core temperature reaches 10 degrees, blood is removed and replaced with a cryoprotective solution. Then the body is frozen and stored vertically, head down in an insulated nitrogen-filled tank. It could take decades or centuries before medicine advances enough to make even an attempt at revival possible. Freezing damage would have to be repaired. They'd have to, you'd have to cure what they died from. There's a lot of things to overcome, but there's been a lot of things they've overcome already in medicine. If it does work, there's the religious question. What happens to all these souls between now and then? Andy Zawacki looks to his Catholic faith. If God knows no time limits and time is infinite, you know, can't, can't he put your soul on hold for an hour or a hundred years or a thousand years? Kowalski is Jewish and thinks God would support any medical treatment that could have saved the life of his grandfather. He had a heart blockage. They knew where it was. They knew what it was. They didn't know how to do a bypass. If he had lived 10 more years, he might still be alive today. This science has implications far beyond just bringing people back to life. The Cryo Prize is currently offering $50,000 to the first person who can freeze an organ like a heart or a liver, thaw it, and successfully transplant it. The federal government is funding research into the very same thing. I'm Jennifer Ann Wilson, 7 Action News.